My guest this week on the Bruce Lee podcast has too many accolades, titles, and projects to name them all, but we'll start by describing him as author, historian, music critic, activist, journalist, academic, record label director, and social justice warrior, Jeff Chang. Jeff is the author of a number of award-winning books on the subjects of hip hop and race in America, which include Can't Stop, Won't Stop, We Gonna Be All Right, Who We Be, and Total Chaos. Jeff has won the American Book Award and the Asian American Literary Award, as well as being named to the Frederick Douglass 200 list of 200 living individuals who best embody the work and spirit of Douglass. And he has been a finalist for the NAACP Image Award. He was the executive director of the Institute for Diversity in the Arts and Committee on Black Performing Arts at Stanford University, and now is the vice president of narrative arts and culture at Race Forward. I told you the list was long, and that's only the highlight reel, so please check out the show notes for more information about Jeff. Born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, Jeff proudly claims the titles of writer and social justice warrior, as you'll hear. He is also working on a book about Bruce Lee right now, and he is launching a series of 14 videos on Black and Asian solidarity starting May 19th, Malcolm X and Yuri Kochiyama's birthday, with the Asian American Foundation. So please check those out and help spread the message of solidarity and love. Jeff is a gentleman and a scholar and a genuine soul that I can't believe I get to call my friend. Listen in as we talk about his dad, my dad, what it means to be a warrior, and Jeff's Hawaiian name on this episode of the Bruce Lee Podcast with Jeff Chang. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Bruce Lee Podcast. My guest this week is author activist. There's so many titles. We'll talk about that. Jeff Chang, welcome to the podcast. Ah, It's so awesome to be here, Shannon. Yay. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, There, I feel like, well, we'll see. We're just going to let the conversation flow because it's all about being like water. But I feel like there's so much to, to talk to you about. I think, well, as I alluded to just a second ago, I mean, you're a historian, you're a music critic, you're an author, you're an activist, you're a journalist, you're an academic, you've run a record label, like, you know, like, (laughs) right? Like, it's, it goes on and on and on and on. Like, how do you self describe? How do I self describe? Um, Wow. Uh, You know, you should say I'm a writer, because that's, I think, the hardest thing that I do. (laughs) Okay. And, uh, And the thing that I get the most joy out of, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of work, but you know, I'm also, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a, I'm a son, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a husband. Cousin. Yeah, I'm a husband. I'm a cousin. I'm a friend. So, yeah. I'm supporting community. But yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I, I have to say. Like, uh, you're, you're so accomplished, um, and, um, and you're so chill. You're so lovely you're so easygoing like you are a friend that's that's how i experience you anyway so yeah that's definitely how i experience you too (laughs) (laughs) it's just a yeah i you know i grew up with um i grew up with that ethic i grew up on an island so you know you 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 kind of you kind of have to be you kind of have to be chill because you know like you're on an island. Why why be why not be chill? So Right, 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 right. You've got to live, you've got to live together in community. So yep. yeah. So you're from Honolulu. It's born born and raised. Mm-hmm. Born and raised yeah. in Honolulu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were just talking right before that you've been taking Hawaiian yeah. lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a Hawaiian name? Uh I do. Um it's and and I've always I've told folks like I don't it's 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 a very powerful name and I don't feel like I live up to it so uh so I I don't really talk about it too much okay but you asked so I should I should say it's it's a pono kanaka and it means you know um somebody uh who tries to be upright tries to keep things in balance which I think my dad was like that. 
you know um and i i think that i try to be but i i don't know that i i've attained it so but you asked so i had to tell well you. yeah <laughs> well i didn't i didn't mean to ask anything overly sensitive and no, you know and, and by the way you're always welcome to say no to any question <laughs> like i'm not comfortable with that like but but let me tell you i i think it's so interesting that you say that because to me mm. Like I look at all the work you're out there doing in the world, the, the things you write about, um, the, the groups you're involved with, the discussions you're trying to have, the, 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 the way you're trying to, you know, um, I really feel like you're trying to make the world a better place. And to me, it's like you, you live up to that name beautifully and, and, and beyond. So uh, when I hear that, I'm sort of like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's so kind of you, Shannon. That's just, it's really kind of you. And it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's something to aspire to for sure. You know, it's something I, I try to look for in others and, um, uh, and I try to foster in myself. Yeah. I think you do an amazing job, and and I think and I think um, all we can do is aspire to it. I think I think when we get to a place where we're like, oh yeah, I, that I, yeah, I've done that. That in some ways, in that moment, it's when we're not it, we've stopped doing it. Like when we've claimed it a little too much. It's like I feel like when you have that aspiration to continue to be that light in the world and bring that balance, that's when you're doing it the most. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. yeah. so. So anyway, I honor I honor that in you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. So it is a API month, and mm. you are you uh, when this episode will be released, and and you're working on a project um, mm -hmm. specifically for um, to be released in uh, this month. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about it? Uh, sure, I'd I'd be happy to. Um, you know, so we're doing something that, that we're calling the May 19th Solidarity uh, Project. And the idea is, it's pretty simple, you know. Um, when you think about the idea of the Asian American uh, or the AAPI, Asian American Pacific Islander, it's always been this kind of uh, fiction, right? There's like, we're not necessarily um, folks who are, are born uh, into that. We are named that, uh, you know, after we're born. And right. it's something that we've created out of a sense of um, belonging to each other, uh, a sense of uh, shared values, common histories, um, and something that we've built solidarity around, especially in this moment, especially, I think, after March 16th and the brutal massacre in Atlanta, there's been a lot of discussion about um, hate and violence against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And what's ironic about that is that it makes us identify even more, right, as AAPIs uh, okay. during that. You know, you don't have to, mm, the, the the sort of attacks were, were like almost all of them pretty much, you can name that they were like due to folks feeling like or 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 having uh, some sort of a misguided you know impression that that the victims that they were attacking were were Chinese uh, mm -hmm. because of you know people like Donald Trump talking about the Chinese flu and kung flu and all this other type of stuff the Chinese virus um, and you know and in a lot of cases maybe in most cases they haven't necessarily been. Uh, Chinese and and yet they've identified, you know, us as as Asian and so, yeah. you know, we've been thinking a lot about that, talking a lot about that, and uh, you know, there's this this idea of like stop API hate, stop hate against Asian Americans, and that's true, and that's something that we absolutely fight for, mm -hmm. but I think you know, we also have to kind of define the community that we want to have. And so the idea was, let's see if we can't push this idea of solidarity out into the world. And to us, solidarity means 
you know, sort of joining together, right, to uh, to make a better community and then acting together to make a better community. And uh, and so the idea is that it's it's pretty simple. And all we're doing is we're, you know, taking uh, historic moments from Asian American and Pacific Islander history and making films out of them and putting them up on social media. Uh, moments where, you know, folks have come together in solidarity uh, with each other. And, um, you know, whether like within Asian American and Pacific Islander lines or across like racial lines, uh, community lines, and uh, trying to like emphasize the importance of solidarity uh, as core to who we are as Asian American and Pacific Islanders. So um, I'm really, really happy that we're gonna be able to work with you to be able to tell the story of yeah. Bruce Lee and his, you know, um, his work through the years around solidarity, his uh, time with Jesse Glover, his time with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, his time with mm -hmm. folks of all these different types of backgrounds and his philosophy around, um, you know, fighting racism and uh, moving mm -hmm. in solidarity. So we're excited. We're going to launch on May 19th. May 19th, the significance of that is that that's Yuri Kochiyama uh, mm -hmm. and Malcolm X's uh, shared birthday. And if you don't know about Yuri Kochiyama, you will uh, by the end <laughs> of the day. Um, you probably have heard of Malcolm X. Uh, yeah. Yuri Kuchiyama was sort of our Malcolm X in many ways, one of our Malcolm X's. Yep. And uh, they were the best of friends and they they lifted each other up. And to be able to start by telling that story, I think is is just a great way to launch this. So we'll start on May 19th and we'll have new videos, stories, um, uh, things for social media every single day, uh, all the way up through June 1st. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's beautiful, um, and it it's it does make me think of my father, and I'm so happy to be able to participate in the project on, on behalf of him and tell his story, um, because you know, as you just mentioned, and as we know, my father was very much about solidarity. You know, I mean, obviously, he wanted to present to the world, um, and in Hollywood in particular. Um, a true portrayal of an authentic Chinese man, uh, which had not been being shown in media. But aside from that, he he was just. I mean, he would talk about it all the time. Just that 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 judging someone based on their race, like that's it's not it's not. You know, he just didn't believe in that, and he just believed in having sincere connection with human beings. And, and I love that, um, that while this is during AAPI month and, and while um, we are talking and in a conversation about South Asian hate, that this is broader also in terms of solidarity mm -hmm. and, and reaching across. So um, I can't wait to see the videos. I'm sure they're gonna be um, really beautiful. And, and to participate in one. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. It's going to be amazing yeah. uh, to be able to kind of to to cast, you know, all of these stories in a in a different kind of a light. And I just think so much about like, you know, your father and and the ways in which he opened the doors to so many people yeah. um, as like this ultimate gesture of generosity and and yeah and solidarity you know join with me right and we will you know together um you know learn how to be able to forge our way forward um it's just it's so amazing it's so it's so powerful I'm so happy that that you're working with us and, and pushing this out there so yeah. it's gonna be awesome. it's gonna be really great well thank you and so speaking of that um you are a Bruce Lee, you're, you're, you're into Bruce Lee. And in fact, you're going to be writing a book about Bruce Lee. Yes. Indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, so recount. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm, um, Me neither. I gotta get this. Book. You gotta get this out. <laughs> <laughs> this is burning inside of me. I gotta get this out. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me why is, why is, why Bruce Lee? 
I mean, obviously, you know, um, I'm sure, you know, you were fans of movies and all that stuff, but, but what is this thing you need to get out about Bruce Lee? Why Bruce Lee for you personally? It's really interesting, you know, like Shannon, you and I have been talking about this and working together on this for a long time. And I've been, you know, uh, thinking about it for a long time, but it, it's it's been one of those years, right? It's been a turning point in a lot of ways. Um, it's a generational turning point uh, to, to see kind of how folks in this particular moment are thinking about Asian America. And so that gave me a whole different kind of perspective on this project that I've been working on for a while. Um, and I think that, you know, what it is, is, is that a lot of folks have um, been able to talk about um, your father's life um, in a sort of mythical kind of a way, right? And he, because he was a legend, he was, yeah, yeah. You know, he's, you know, like he touched millions upon millions of people. Um, but it always, like, it never ceases to amaze me the kinds of things that he did, the doors that he broke open. Um, and mm -hmm. to be able to do that during these periods in which all the odds were stacked against him. And so much of that was about his journey towards um, finding himself, um, you know, in the US uh, as an Asian American. And so uh, I was like, wow, you know, maybe that's the, the way that it hasn't been told in print yet. I think Bao, you know, our good friend Bao Nguyen, like did a fantastic job of being able to put that, you know, on screen. But, yeah. um, you know, book form is a little bit different. And, you know, there's things that we can do in a book form that, that Bao um, couldn't do in film form. There's things that I'll never be able to do in, in, in film, you know, like what he did in film, I'll never be able to do in book form. But yeah. um, just I think of like this particular project as as kind of in dialogue with with Bao's work and and in dialogue with you. And I've evolved around that. So the way that I'm thinking about it now is is we can see Bruce as a man, as a human, you know, living through these tumultuous times. Um we can see it better if we understand him as somebody who is becoming an Asian American, mm -hmm. right? And by the same token, we can understand Asian America if we look at, you know, your father's life, um, the kinds of struggles that he went through coming out of war and famine, mm -hmm. um, the the process of be, of coming of age in, um, in, in a place where there's so much um, youthful energy, right? Um, and some of it is really self-destructive uh, energy, right? It's mm -hmm. not so dissimilar to the Bronx at the start of hip hop um, and how your dad made his way through that. And then becoming literally uh, not so much an immigrant, but a re-migrant, like he's returning to the US. Right. Um, but, you know, but then going through the kinds of things that many, many immigrants, generations of immigrants have kind of gone through um, and breaking down the door in Hollywood, um, you know, at a time where the images of Asians were so backward, they went back, you know, centuries, there were centuries old stereotypes that he had to overthrow, like two, 300 year old stereotypes that mm -hmm. he had to break down and, and kind of, you know, change. And, uh, and so all of that is a really epic story. And it makes me feel like that's what makes him a legend you know um you don't really assume that he's a legend uh you you see him as a baby you know and and struggling through war and famine and moving all the way on up and growing into uh who he becomes and how he transforms the world that's like it's an amazing story it's such an epic story so yeah um, yeah and when did this sort of consciousness about this part of his story really come into your understanding? Because most people, and I don't know if this is true for you, start out as a Bruce Lee fan because they see the movies and the movies are awesome. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's how it started for you as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, you know, I, so I, I did a book on hip hop called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And, yep. um, and, and I think of 
I'm looking at a picture of him right now on my wall. I think of 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 Bruce um, a lot of, in the same ways that I think of of hip hop. Right? I like when I first heard hip hop, I was like, "Wow, what's that?" And you just want to like remember, you know, you just want to remember and memorize all the lines and that yeah. kind of thing. And then you find out more about it, and you you know, you pick up a spray can, you start doing your thing, then start buying records. You know, you save up to get turntables, you do all that, and then you know, like. One day you're like just a straight up like b-boy hip hop head, you know. <laughs> and I just feel like the same thing with Bruce. Like I I saw his movies as a very very young kid, you know, probably you know seven or eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and of course everybody wanted to be him. Mm -hmm. And then you come to find out more and more about his life, you know. And it's like you want to you want to learn martial arts. You want to you want to sort of, you know, uh, you want to kind of get that attitude like like he has in the movies and stuff. Then you start finding out about, you know, the the all of the things that kind of went into into that, into like making him who he was. Um, and and that's sort of, you know, how I kind of arrive at it. So I, I come to hip hop as a kid, just like, you know, a fan of it and you know, realize that in a lot of ways, like I learned so much about it. Um, I learned about life through, through, through it. And I feel the same way about, about your father, um, mm. that I, I, I learned about life and how to be in the world um, from your father. Wow. And, uh, wow. So, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to write about now. <laughs> well, so I mean, easy, so easy to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have no doubt that you will do it. Um, I mean, you're an amazing author. You've written these wonderful books about hip hop, about, um, you know, the colorization of America and race and resegregation and like, you know, all of these um, amazing books, which, by the way, everybody check the show notes because all <laughs> of that information will be in there. And you've won book awards and you know been recognized and you've you've um you were the executive director of the institute for diversity at stanford and you know all these sorts of things and i i just um i had i, I mean you, you kind of told me already but um you just what i love about you is that you fall in love with these things right like you fell in love with hip-hop yeah. You know, and that, and then you fell in love with Bruce Lee, and but you go so deep with it, you you know, and like I'm you and, like that. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Because I'm obsessive like that. Like you can see all the books <laughs> behind me and the records and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I'm an obsessive guy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so maybe this is a good way to talk about uh, the theme of th mm. that I'm talking to people about this week, which is being a warrior and how you show up as a warrior in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the questions I I ask people is, you know, what is your warrior style in terms of facing a challenge or or uh, attaining skill or whatever it is? So, how would you answer that question? I think I'm still learning, you know, how to do it and stuff. But I, <laughs> there's this term that people started putting out there derogatorily, and I embrace it, which is like social justice warrior, you know, mm. racial justice warrior. Uh, mm. Folks put it out like, oh, it's you know, there's social justice warriors, blah 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 blah. I'm proud of that, you know. I I came to it honestly. Um, mm. I came to it through trying to process, you know, what it means to be treated in a, in a, in a, you know, in a way that, you know, people dismiss you or treat you like an outcast, like an outsider because of, of your race or the, the class that you come from or that kind of thing. Um, uh, where you're from and all that, uh, they underestimate you, um, in the worst case, you know, they abuse you. Right. And, um, and so for me trying to show up, in that way is is it's not about it's not about sort of revenge <laughs> so much yeah, right. as it is about like no actually let me show you who i am you know and and maybe there's a way that we can actually find a way to connect you know 
um, which is maybe it's a little naive, but you know, it's the thing about, about a true warrior that I've always learned in all of my studies and from your father as well is, is that that's what um, a warrior, you know, does is, is, is to show, you know, respect and to, and to fight against disrespect, however that might show up. Um, that's how, you know, I was taught by, you know, my Sifus and that's how I was taught by all your, your father's works and his writings and, you know, his, his, um, everything that he's done, everything that he's done. Um, so that's really what it's about is if you're coming from that kind of position where you're marginalized or you're stepped on or that kind of thing, um, what you really want is recognition. You want respect. You want equity. You want justice, right? And what does justice look like? Well, it doesn't look like pounding the other person until they're like in submission to you. Like it's it's it, it looks like uh, Cornell West always says this. It looks like love. It looks like you know an actual exchange. Um, so if I've got to pound on you a little bit for you to like look up at me and and treat me with a little bit of respect and start maybe showing me a little love, then I'll do that. I'd rather not, but you know, <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, that's the way I guess I'm trying to come. And, and again, I, you know, it, I, I this is what I'm striving for. I, you know, it's not, I haven't attained sure. it. <laughs> that's, what that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> so. Well, but I, I imagine in, this type of work in this landscape where there is a lot where there are a lot of feelings and and in particular a lot of people who have felt um marginalized for so long and what that does to the soul and mm -hmm. and to um one's emotions um i would imagine it's oftentimes a difficult landscape to navigate and so when you are feeling particularly challenged by a moment or by a specific incident or anything like that, like what is your, what is your process? Mm. It's hard, you know, and I, again, this is like what I'm striving for, you know, I'm, sure. I'm striving for that sort of that quiet that, you know, um, that your father talks about, you know, like you can't be in yeah. a fight situation fight. where you're working from emotion because that's where you you lose it, right? You have to right. you have to be able to to process, and uh, and it's a dance, and um, and and it's and it's really it's an exchange in the in the best case scenario it's a communication type of situation so it's like i have to always try to bring myself back to that um because you know I, again i i think that i was you know i am still motivated by anger i'm still motivated by rage you know i'm outraged at the situation in atlanta i'm outraged at the situation that that um you know, that folks have to face, you know, uh, around being in uh, targets of violence, you know, whether that be Asian Americans or Pacific Islanders or any any race, particularly in this moment, I think, you know, um, African Americans, folks of African descent. Um, yeah. And um, and yet, at, you know, at, at the same time, you know, the the anger and the rage can overwhelm and 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 make you lose sight of of where you need to be able to go uh and how you need to be able to move through the exchange that's about to happen so that's what i'm trying for that's really what it, really what i'm trying to get to um i don't know if i attain it all the time i definitely don't <laughs> i don't know if any of us even my father or anyone attained it all the time so you know yeah. like life life is a process and there are always new levels to learn and you know new lessons to be learned new levels to attain so um the fact that you're even aware of it that you're even trying to is huge in in my opinion and especially around a topic like this where there's been so much injustice 
uh, over the millennia of the world, you know, um, and and where and that there's still so much work to be done, um, you know, and um, and so of course you're going to have you're going to get riled up by that. You're going to have anger, you know. Um, but I think it speaks volumes that you talk about this place of stillness. I've, I've talked to other people on the podcast who've also talked about this place of stillness, like mm -hmm. that that is the place where the most productive, um, the most productive action comes from. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that's true? Yeah, it's that, it's that source. It's trying to get back to, I think that's, I think that's what you're, you're, I think that that's what Bruce Lee was talking about is trying to get back yeah. to that source, right? To connect to that, that deep, deep well of humanity that all of us have. Um, mm -hmm. And some people like they cover that up and they just sort of, they never go back to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they lock it away and, you know, it's, it's never going to be accessible uh, to them uh, unless they really, really work at it. And, um, you know, and, and I think, it, it, it's it's hard we forget about it we can get lost in that and uh and everything but yeah that's where that is that's that 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 um uh that that part that actually will allow us to be able to connect if we let it um mm -hmm. other folks and um yeah it's about that like you, you the the metaphors right like you I, I know you're always talking about it too is like the metaphors of connection in in just you know even in whatever inspiring or in in martial arts or that kind of stuff uh yeah in in that that goes all the way it goes all the way through to how we um live with each other how we figure out how to how to exist coexist with each other yeah 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 and you said something earlier you said um you know that that part of it is showing each other who, who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and, um, I feel like that is the thing that my father did so well. So he, he wanted to connect with human beings and be in community and be in connection, but then he also cultivated himself mm -hmm. and, and worked to find ways in which to show us all who he was mm -hmm. and at, you know, and and then he just happened to be a Chinese man, right? And and then we're seeing the like breadth and depth of this Chinese man. And so it sounds to me like there are two fronts, and you can you can tell me um, if there's if if this is accurate. Um, that in part it's it's telling the stories and allowing people to see mm -hmm. individual people from all different walks of life and backgrounds um, clearly and deeply and beautifully. And then there's um, working to be in connection with one another mm -hmm. in, in a, in a, in a generous way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, that I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, you know, pretty good at. I'm pretty good at telling a story. I'm pretty good at, at <laughs> Weaving a yarn, um, and and so that's what I I try to do, you know, in the work that I do. It's really about trying to represent the stories that are shared with me um, in a way that that um, is true, feels true, and makes that connection and allows people to be able to 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 really see. Um, and I admire that in, in people. And this is something that you have, Shannon, like uh, there's, you know, there's, um, there's a thing that is about really being able to like, when you meet somebody to be able to kind of like, yeah, to see, you know, and yeah. it's not, it's not everybody who's like that, you know, yeah. um, some people are actually blinded by their own selves. Um, but you're not like that. And <laughs> And so I, you know, I strive to try to try to be that way. And and when people sh share stories with me, I, I understand that I then have a responsibility to them. Um, mm -hmm. And 
And so I need to, I need to try to take myself out for a little bit and really see, and then I need to be able to hold what it is that I need to, what folks are giving to me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, think about how to, how to deliver that. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, in journalism or in writing and that kind of thing in the Western tradition, it's like, well, it's all about the truth and telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And you just, you want to get to the truth. Sometimes the truth can't be told actually, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and that's something that those of us who come from these kinds of cultures, we know that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that leads to the second part, right? Which is the responsibility and the, the community building thing is, is if, if I were to, sometimes if I were to tell you all the things that I know, right, that would betray uh, things that, that folks are not trying to, trying to have out there um, and would disturb where we're all trying to get to together, right? Yeah. And so, you know, like people have asked me sometimes, oh, what did you leave out of the book? And I'm like, there's something <laughs> I can tell you. And there's a lot of things I can't tell you, right? And that's why I left it out of the book, um, right? You know, especially like around hip hop or or those kinds of things, right? It's yeah. so it's it's a it's an interesting kind of balance that needs to be kind of struck, and and I just uh, um, you know I'm always trying to navigate that. It's it's a very difficult thing to do sometimes. I think it's a very difficult thing to do all the time. I mean, honestly. Uh, I think every moment is different. I think every person you talk to is different in some small way. We're all the same in a lot of ways, but we have our, 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 our different places we come from and our different experiences that create our perspective. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we have our own issues of balance and, and knowing where the line is even with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I feel like one of the things that the world needs is uh, compassion. Compassion. Because I feel mm -hmm. like, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of a buzzword. I feel like I, I never want the word compassion to lose its meaning because it's, it, 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 it's so important in my opinion to understand that we have that at our essence, we're all the same, but, but, but in our experience, we're all different. Mm -hmm. And so even if it's just a, a minutia of, of difference that, you know, like we could have been raised on the same block in the same neighborhood, gone to the same schools and have totally different experiences of life mm -hmm. and our perspective mm -hmm. on life. And that, and that everyone is coming from their experience and their perspective, you know, mm -hmm. and they may not have, and they may need more information um, brought into their experience in order to broaden their perspective. Mm -hmm. But, um, but that's why balance and that issue of like, you know, how much to say, how much not to say, what to reflect, what, what not to reflect is, is such a challenge, but also mm -hmm. such a challenge worth, wor such a worthy challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean you know i i i try to write in the direction of uh of trying to bring more justice into the world but you know the like we we're talking about earlier you know justice sometimes is framed as this thing that's meant to be bloody you know or yeah that, right. that is supposed to exact some sort of a um uh whatever, some sort of a toll from the person who did harm. Um, right. And and the thing is, is what you're saying, what I hear you saying, and I think the way that I'm putting it together now is sort of that justice always has to be balanced by the compassion piece, right? Oh. That, that, that for us to be able to actually make that connection, right? It's not just me, not just about me, you know, beating the crap out of you or whatever for what you did to my brother, like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right like i'm still gonna have to live with you i'm still on this island yeah. with you whether that be like you know the the uh, the little island in the middle of the pacific or this big island of the world and stuff and so you know how can we find that compassion piece and that's the hardest thing like 
that's the thing that really like I just I, it's so hard to hit to get my head around all the time, and that's why yeah. it's sort of like the the biggest lesson, right? That all of these great religions kind of put out there into the world, right? It's it's yeah. oh, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> The art of fighting without fighting. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. you know, I'm sure you may know this already from the research you've already done, but my, my father talked about that a bit himself, which is he, he would say, when I was a kid, I used to go around challenging people all the time. And I and the only thing I could think to challenge them with were my fists. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, come on, let's go, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, and and now that when I look back and when I started to learn about philosophy and I started to learn about all of this and look inside at myself more deeply, I look back at that experience and I think, you know, victory, real victory is not taken by force. Mm -hmm. Real mm -hmm. victory is taken through, mm -hmm. through bringing, bringing others in, you know, like <laughs> through collaboration. Right. Like the, isn't that the, like the first part of the art of war? Isn't like the isn't like the, that the first section of the art of war or something? <laughs> no, it's true. It's really yeah. true. Yeah. 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 And that he like I I love what you're saying about like we have this idea that justice is supposed to be bloody or violent in some way, and it's like, well, I mean, certainly there are there are levels of it that can look that way, but it but true justice in a lot of ways is about is a coming together, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that my father, who is like the who looks like this, you know, you know, he's this honed fighting machine, mm -hmm. and yet the way he went about his life in terms of reaching for representation or reaching for his goals was to include, to bring in, as mm -hmm. opposed to fight, 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 fight everyone, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's it's a huge lesson for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think about like, you know, going back to like this particular story that, that um, you know, that, that you and, you know, um, and the director, Bo uh, Mahasaini, yeah. be trying to tell and yeah. stuff and about, about how folks come together it's it's just it's so powerful to me to think about um your father uh, gosh he must have been like 19 years old or something in seattle um yeah. you know meeting with jesse glover and meeting like his whole sort of motley crew of folks that he assembles in seattle and like what like what that must have been like you know like yeah. folks are training together but they're sort of united by this idea of of you know trying to better themselves trying to defend themselves straight up right jesse was beaten yeah. by police and so like that's something that he carried with him he was beaten yeah. by police as a kid for no reason just walking down the street just taking down an alley and beaten um and so he is like confronting his fear and he's confronting his his um anxiety about you know uh who he is uh he's he's like fighting all of those kinds of things but he's finding also like this this sort of mentor in your father and your father's probably also finding himself a mentor in jesse like in terms of thinking about like what it means to to be a, a person of color in in a white city in a white society and stuff yeah. um it's, it's really really powerful thinking about that as as this coming together for for justice for community um and the compassion that they show to each other Ooh, yeah. wow yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. My brain is like going in a thousand different directions. Um, but um, um, I'm trying to think about our conversation and, and you're so immersed in this world, right, of, of 
being a social justice warrior, of talking about um, uh, bringing people together, trying to create awareness and all of that. And I know this is this is probably an unfair question because if somebody asked me this question, I, I wouldn't know how to answer it either, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I, so I hear you say your work is to tell stories and to create awareness and to bring people together. Is that what you think other people's work can be as well in this arena? Like what, what is, what, 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 you know, for someone who wants to try to make the world a more unified place, where, where does someone start? Mm. I mean, I think, you know, as a storyteller, do you mean, or as a, as a, or maybe. I'm as a human to... being. I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, if, if telling stories or, or reaching out or reading other people's stories, I mean, I know there's, there's education points, but like, just as a human being, like I, I tend to think like, first and foremost, I work on myself. And mm -hmm. then, and then I can step out into the world as, as a, as a better self, which then mm -hmm. helps, you know, and if my main, one of my main goals is to be in community with as, with as many people can, then I'm going to work on that in me. So when I step out into the world that is me and that helps me to be in community with others, you know, but I don't know, um, you know, that's kind of a nebulous thing, right? So I guess the question is, do you have anything more prescriptive than that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes you. Ready to go. Time, we'll talk tomorrow. Um, <laughs> that, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you know, the, the, the. The thing that I learned from my father is because I'm looking at his picture now too. So I got your father over here, and my father's <laughs> over here. Um, <laughs> Perfect. But you know, the thing that I learned I learned from my father is that you know my father was a real kind of he was super. You know, this is where I'm trying to get to in my older age, right? Like he was a mellow guy. He was a super mellow dude. Um, my uncle used to tell me, he used to say, "Oh yeah, your father. You know your father, cool head, cool head." And I'd be like, whoa, it was, you know, he was sort of talking pigeon English that he was like, yeah, you know, he was just nothing phased him. And he was able to like, he was able to really interact with everybody, mm. just like your father was, it seems like, yeah, your father just mm. like impressed everybody, still is impressing millions upon millions of people. My dad was like that in a real small way on an island in the middle of the Pacific, but, you know, it's just that thing of of um trying to find that connection i think i think that's the thing that i kind of you know learned from him is just watching him and how he he was a he he ran a credit union you know he, he was a he was like your friendly neighborhood guy down the street type of thing you know neighborhood <laughs> credit union type of vibe and and uh and everybody came in you know like wealthy people you know like whatever, rich doctors, real estate moguls and that kind of stuff. And, you know, folks who are workers, you know, folks who are working on the plantation, folks who are, you know, office workers, folks who are, you know what I mean? Just like regular people, you know, grandmas, yeah. grandpas, you know, like kids opening up their first savings accounts and that kind of thing. And he just found a way to connect with everybody. And I just watched that. And, um, and I think that that really just gave me kind of my model for life, maybe, you know, like yeah. when I, when I, um, when I, I, I can't, I'm not like, there's a part of me that's really private. And then there's a part of me that when I go out, you know, I just, I, I want to try to be like my dad, you know? Um, and, and so it's, it's the, it's that sort of, you know, that balance of being, you know, able to, to find how like other people define you, you know what I mean? How you help to define them. And, and then that thing of, you know, being here, you know, just me and Lourdes or me and Lourdes and the kids or me and Lourdes and my friends, like, you know, like you are that kind of thing at the baseball game or whatever. Right. right. Um, you know, like 
thinking about those different types of of spaces and who would kind of need to be in those um you know it's it's just sort of what i i think about a lot right now and i'll say this right now like more than ever because right now it just feels like uh, like we're we're coming out of maybe not maybe not even coming out of hopefully coming out of a period where everybody's been against everybody else and it's yeah. been all about i me mine and it's been about you know all about like i'm going to say whatever i need to say to get to get over you on you and and then you know we'll deal with the consequences later and actually the consequences aren't going to really affect me because you know like i'm i'm doing my thing in the world and you're doing your thing but you know i'm i'm like on top you know it's that sort of mentality like in the world right now and i think the pandemic has helped to kind of shut that down because now all of us have to confront like this big huge thing that's bigger than us um and you know so maybe like that's a way for us to to think about compassion like certainly a lot more people i think i've been thinking about who have who's been affected by the pandemic you know disproportionately and it's been black folks it's been native folks right it's yeah. been latinx folks it's been pacific islanders it's been frontline workers essential workers you know doctors nurses um you know elderly care workers right food workers like you know field workers like those are the folks who have been really really hurt by this and we've had to think about that even as we're thinking about how to protect ourselves and you know maybe that's maybe that's i'm not going to say it's a good thing but maybe that's a thing that brings us you know in a place where we're able to see each other's humanity more and um you know so i'm, I'm hopeful i you know this is the this is the, the the kind of hope that I have as we're kind of hopefully getting through, you know, you're vaccinated, I'm vaccinated, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of people who aren't, but like, you know, we'll hopefully all get there together to this yeah. to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope so too. I mean, when I see all this that's going on in the world, um, the hope that I have is that it's in service to something bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, one of the, what, what you were talking about, like we're coming out of this time or hopefully coming out of this time where everybody's trying to, um, get over on each other. This is exactly one of the things my father talked about, which is that competition is not a great model for mm -hmm. humanity. <laughs> you know, it's not a great mm -hmm. model for martial arts in his opinion, and mm -hmm. not a great model for humanity because then there are winners and losers and you're always trying to best someone else rather than trying to work on yourself mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. even if you're working on yourself you're only working on yourself in order to best someone else <laughs> right? yeah yeah <laughs> we were talking about this earlier like you know like me and you know me and lordes are over here like competing with each other i think competition's like good you know like you right. you know in hip hop it's about the battle and that kind of thing but like as a as as a game or as a like thing where you're lifting each other up that's one thing right. and i think as a as a as sort of a way to run countries and to divide people like no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know? i like, mean no. i think respectful competition is great like when two fighters get in a ring and yeah. they beat the crap out of each other and then at the end they're like you know bow to each other and they're like good job, you know, oh, you know, you, you, you got me this time or whatever, yeah. like all of that is great. Yeah. But yeah, like as, as human beings and as a way to like, you know, make yeah. me feel better yeah. about myself, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. I love that too, though, about, about what you've written and what your father has written and talked about, you know, it's like trying to deal with those difficult things that are they're they're balancing acts right like so much of what is fed to this is like it's just this way or it's that way but we all live in the in-betweens and i think that yeah. that's where all of the really rich stuff the really human stuff come kind of comes out so um yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah well so i have one question that i ask everybody that okay. comes on the okay. podcast um because it is an a philosophy podcast at the end of the day. Mm. Um, 
if there was one lesson or piece of wisdom that you have learned that you could express or just give to somebody and they might be able to just take it in, um, that would be helpful, that has helped you, that could, might help someone else, what is that piece of wisdom or that lesson or that experience that you'd like to share? Hmm. I mean, I guess like it's kind of like it's maybe going back to that first question, you know, the my Hawaiian name is Pono Kanaka. And the first part of that is Pono, which is um, it means a lot of different types of things, but it's really about like what's right, what's just, what's balanced, what is sort of the way to conduct, you know, yourself. And so that's why, you know, I, again, I don't talk about my name too much because it's it's such an it's such a distant i'm just you know it's so far from from where i'm at and but i think that that just living like with that word you know like is is uh it's it's such a it's such a you know it's a it's such a, a great thing to try to aspire to um and so i'm thankful for you know for being given that name and i'm thankful for you know the the models of 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 you know being pono you know like your father like my father um that i've had in life and uh and you know that's right now you know it's sort of the kind of thing that that i think a lot about um you know what uh what we have to leave for for the folks who come after um and uh and i you know and i think that that's sort of a thing just two words you know, just be pono you know um yeah what kind of i mean out? you i just have to say you claimed your claimed earlier you claimed the the warrior title of social justice warrior and then here you <laughs> and, then, and, and then here you are saying like I mean, I don't know my name. I don't live up to it. Dude, you gotta man. claim that name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. you're talking about you know balance and and being just and being you know like mm -hmm. that's exactly what you're you know like I don't think you have to say like oh yeah I'm not I'm not the Buddha I'm not there yet you know but man like you've made your whole life about it. I couldn't be the Buddha with all these records I own. No, no, no. <laughs> there's a lot of records I really desire, and I just, you know, I mean, you have attachments. You have attachments. You have, I have a lot of attachments. Right <laughs> <laughs> over here, yeah, with the records, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you must have lots of attachments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I I love. Thank you for sharing your Hawaiian name with me. Thank and, you and with that. and with everyone listening now, by the way, oh um, I I never would have done it if it weren't you. Like honestly, I just <laughs> I don't even talk to my family about it. My family, you know, my, I, my my cousin, my family gave me the name. You know, so yeah, I love, but I love these names like this because they have so many yeah. layers of meaning. They and do. Like, I love asking people what their you know Asian esque name is if they have one and what does it mean to li listen to them try to describe what what it means you know what's yours i i don't know if i ever knew uh, yeah my so in cantonese my my chinese name is lei hong ying and mm. it means so lei is li and then hong ying is um hong is fragrant Fragrance, fragrant. It's like Hong Kong is Hong Kong. It means fragrant harbor. So it's fragrance. Mm -hmm. And then Ying is um, the sort of like crystallized pure essence of something. Nice. So the crystallized pure essence of fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully Ooh. good. Hopefully good fragrance, <laughs> not bad. Fragrance. No, that's beautiful. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So. No, no, I, it makes a lot of sense to me. Like getting down to the essence and then like a fragrance, like some, like distributing that, like getting it out yeah. into the world. That's you. Yeah. That's something. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's really we're, we're living up to our names and we didn't even know it, right? Yeah. Like. <laughs> I'm not. You are. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> in a few years. We'll see where we're at. <laughs> oh, uh, well, thank you so much for being a guest, for being my friend, first and foremost, more than anything. I love you. that we get to work together as well, but I just love knowing you, and I'm so excited to share you on this podcast to whomever listens so thank you for being my guest so appreciative so full of gratitude thank you shannon thank you yeah all right thanks everyone